Now, last Thursday, the Bureau of Land Management proposed a 171-page rule for hydraulic fracturing on federal public lands and on Indian lands. Uh, that's, you know, that's a, an additional 171 pages of red tape on American energy production. Um, it's far from clear why BLM even needs to issue these regulations. Wyoming adopted hydraulic fracturing regulations almost three years ago. Uh, since then, public land states such as Colorado, Idaho, Montana, uh, New Mexico, North Dakota, uh, Utah have also adopted hy hydraulic fracturing regulations. Many of us from public land states uh, which produce oil and natural gas are concerned that BLM's rule will push oil and gas production off federal public lands and off Indian lands. So uh, we're concerned that BLM's rule will put federal public lands and Indian lands at a competitive disadvantage uh, with state and private lands. Uh, in March of 2012, uh, Bob Abbey, then the director of BLM, testified that uh, oil and gas producers were already moving to the south and east, he said, in order to avoid federal lands. Uh, this will cost uh, states and Indian tribes thousands of jobs, millions of dollars in revenue. Uh, so while I'm still reviewing the BLM's rules, I I'd like to uh, bring uh, uh, Mr. Spizak into the conversation and, and ask whether you can uh, assure us that BLM's hydraulic fracturing rule will not push oil and gas production off federal public lands and off of Indian lands. Well, I'm not sure I can make that particular assurance, but I know we've worked with this revised proposed rule that will be published tomorrow to look at uh, where we were seeing where there might be duplication or redundancy in the rules and what the states are doing. And so we're, we're trying to uh, strike that balance where we would, where we would uh, through memorandums of understandings that would be, in, that would be implement, implemented with individual states to identify those areas and, and work out who will take care of what.